a former captain of the Dutch national team, who then, in his first managerial job, broke the dominance of Ajax and PSV, and then quit to learn under Pep Guardiola, and is a free agent. It's too, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. If it hasn't clicked for you yet, I'm talking about Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, today's managerial biography. Hello Rangers fans, uh, you're probably watching this video as well as my usual audience and what I'm going to do is marry your attention spans. There will be timestamps down below and you will find the first 75% of this video dedicated to Van Bronckhorst's career which everyone can uh, look at and enjoy. Then the final bit will be talking about how he'll fit in at Rangers which may not be to everyone's taste but the Rangers fans, you'll love it. But without any further ado, here's the story and the projected story of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Bronckhorst. Van Bronckhorst was a, a defender in midfield and mainly left back and left winger for our Arsenal final Barcelona Rangers. He started his career in 1993 and he ended it in 2010 quite infamously after the uh, 2010 World Cup where he captained the Dutch national team in their brutal defeat to Spain. Now despite that team being quite famous for its foul play, Van Bronckhorst was always noted as a technically gifted player and particularly on his tactical intelligence. See, he came through as a left winger, but he was noted to have the understanding to play and cover defensive roles, and that's where he moved backwards into his career. In his career, by the way, he won two SPLs, a Premier League, and like two La Ligas, and a Champions League. Now, one reason men like Arteta and Lampard get big jobs quite quickly is because of the perceived education they've had in their playing career, the managers they've worked under. Now, Van Bronckhorst is no exception. He's worked under Dick Advocat, Arsene Wenger, and a Frank Rijkaard. Now, Rijkaard is quite an influential manager. He laid the foundations of Pep Guardiola, whereas Advocat and Wenger may be more cultured and they have experience and expertise across multiple fields. And after retiring in 2010, Van Bronckhorst went on to become a part of Feyenoord's coaching setup. Now, at first, Van Bronckhorst started um, the pretty low down the ladder. He was actually the assistant to the under-21s manager of Feyenoord, and this was around a the time they were financially struggling. I like this because it does show he started from the bottom to get to the top. Then in 2011, he was announced as the assistant to Ronald Koeman, who took over Feyenoord. And it's worth saying that the assistant managers do have a lot of responsibility in the team. I was speaking with my friend Jack, he's at us on screen, who knows quite a lot about uh, the in workings of football, and he, he mentioned and showed to me that really, it, it can often be like a 50, 40, 60% split between the head coach and what the assistants do for the team. And if that's true, it's a glowing reflection of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, because in his first season with Coleman, Feyenoord finished second. In the descending years before that, they finished 10th, 4th and 7th. Koeman and Van Bronckhorst... <laughs> That's getting too long. Koeman and Gio. Gio's quicker. Gio's shorter. Koeman and Gio, uh, they stayed together for three years and they finished second, third and second. But this is the Eredivisie. That's a farmer's league. You're English. You like the Premier League. You don't care about that. No, jokes aside, we can't really credit where Feyenoord finished completely to uh, the manager's assistant. But what we can look at is the players that are shined in this period under the tutelage of the, the coaching team. Uh, Stefan de Vrij, Tony Wilhena, Daryl Janma, Ruud Vorme and uh, Bruno Martins Indy. The coaches were improving players and they went on to be saleable assets. Gio impressed in this time and in 2015 he earned a promotion to become the head coach, the manager of Feyenoord for the 15-16 season. Now let's talk his success first. His first season, Van Bronckhorst won final the uh, KMVB Cup, their first since 2008. And in the next year, he went one better. He won final their first title since 1999. And coincidentally, they won that the year after Van Bronckhorst left uh, final as a player. Across four seasons, final finished third, first, fourth, and third. And uh, since that uh, Gio's left, uh, they finished third and then fifth. See, Feyenoord may be the third largest club quite clearly in the Netherlands, but their, their financial situation is quite comparable to Rangers. In, in fact, across Van Bronckhorst's four years in charge, Feyenoord spent just £38 million while selling £58 million worth of talent, and Gio never complained about it. 
That's quite comparable to Rangers who spent nearly £30 million in the past three years. And that is during Covid. See, Gio did very well to develop a side that honestly had little talent and after he left, uh, basically really didn't do much in their careers. In their first season, they had Michel Kramer, who uh, is still in the Eredivisie, aged 26. They had Hero Elliott, who is the five-star skiller you've used on FIFA. And they also had a 34-year-old Dirk Count, who, by the way, in the 15-16 season, uh, Gio got 23 goals out of the former Liverpool forward. And in the next campaign, when they won the league, he got 12 goals. Maybe Count was carrying them. Wrong. See, there was an article at the time uh, that looked into Feyenoord, and it really praised their collective spirit, and it was invoked by Gio's charismatic personality. He was noted as a brilliant man-manager. In fact, when Tony Vilhena left the club in acrimonious circumstances, he came out and like blasted everyone, apart from Gio, who, in fact, he came out and made sure he said uh, to thank him for the confidence he gave the player. See, the Rotterdam side ran right in the early years, they were great at creating good chances. They took 0.6 shots outside of the box, less in 15-16 than they did in 14-15. That shows that they were more efficient in their chance creation and shot taking. They also completed more dribbles per game too, maybe another inclination that were a little bit more exciting. Now the title win in particular was praised for having balance in the 4-3-3 system you can see on screen. Every player knew exactly what they were doing and they were extremely well disciplined. Now this fills me with confidence. Uh, for Rangers fans or wherever Gio goes next because inexperienced managers, God, in Frank Lampard, um, generally can look a bit clueless or their team can look like they don't really know what they're doing. See this. The disciplined aspect of Gio's team should excite you. And yes, after the title victory, the side began to struggle a bit more at breaking down deep blocks. In Gio's final final season, uh, they came third and they scored 75 goals in 34 games. Which is still crazy by the way, it's just a little bit off the 86 goals they scored in their title winning campaign. But Gio did adapt his side at times, they won the KMVB Cup not only in 15-16, but in 17-18 and he was noted for deploying a back five in that latter campaign. Overall, Van Bronckhorst did very well in his first job. Later on, he was criticised for tactical inflexibility, but for the first two years, he got it spot on, and his teams were rigid, and they were disciplined, and even when things began to tail off, it wasn't by much. They still got into the European spaces. They didn't drop off that much. It's worth saying in Europe, they were quite poor, but... I don't know, that's quite forgivable for a club like Feyenoord. Also, let's not forget, seven years earlier, the club were facing bankruptcy, so he really was praised for spearheading the resurrection of this club. And importantly, Gio has only learned more since then. See, I could talk about his time in China, but you, you couldn't care less. I mean, I'll quickly sum it up in case you are. Uh, Gio joined in 2020, they sold their best striker, he left the end. No, what's far more interesting is the willingness and the, the, the trend of learning in the career of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. At Feyenoord, for example, he brought in Dick Advocat as an advisor, his former manager, so even when he was on the first job, he was actively trying to learn. He said a lot of his training sessions were influenced by Arsene Wenger, sometimes doing things like yoga in the morning. And in 2019, he paused his head coaching career to join the City Group. This meant he went behind the scenes, not only on the coaching end, so he could learn under Pep Guardiola, but on the business set. That's right, not only was he seen regularly at the training ground uh, to analyse and watch what Guardiola was doing on the training pitch, but he was also spending time with the New York and Melbourne City sides and seeing how the City group functioned. Now this should excite Rangers fans because the City group are kind of comparable to Red Bull, Red Bull Leipzig. It's a hive mind of intelligence and football thinking. To even spend six months there, like Gio did, that must have brought on so much education that most managers would miss out on. A good example of someone who spent time there is Patrick Vieira. He spent quite a lot of time in the City Group first at City and then at New York City FC. And look how well he's doing at Crystal Palace. You can find out more about that on the biography I did of him. But the point I'm getting across is that Gio has not only continued to learn, but what we saw at Feyenoord, that's an outdated model. That's Gio 1.5. We're going to see Gio 2.0 in his next job. Now let's talk Rangers. What's hilarious is that Football Rangi, by far the best Dutch football news site, um, they quoted Van Bronckhorst in 2019 as saying, Rangers is a special club. I still look at the results and it would be a great honour to be the manager of Rangers. I've been linked with them once or twice and it was very nice. It's a great football club and it has a special feeling in my heart. You never know what may happen in the future and we all know that it is never wise to try and predict 
where your career might take you. Now, despite the name Euro Expert, I'm going to be honest, I've not watched a lot of Rangers to be able to comment fully on the play style and the players there. I have better things to do like watching Cadiz versus Real Mallorca like a loner. However, I have read a little bit on the coach's voice about Gerard and his Rangers side. I've been looking at what fans have been saying about the fears and benefits of Gio coming in. And I've been reading a bit on the, the players and the play style. So Gio did well at final with his 4-3-3. Like I said, they were disciplined, but also they like to move the wide midfielders or the central midfielders into wider spaces to create overloads and help uh, final progress up the pitch. They also like to put emphasis on crossing and get the ball into the box. Not in a Sam Allardyce way, just a bit more technical than that. Gio also has a squad as well that was filled with young players and he proved he could work with them well. So with Rangers' current setup, I think it's a perfect fit. From what I can see, they're playing a 4-3-3 pretty exclusively. They have wide talent in uh, Ryan Kent and Tavernier. Aribo is a midfielder too, who clearly likes to operate in wide spaces. Look at his heat map from this season. The squad is also full of young players. You've got uh, Calvin Bassi, Ineas Hadji. Now, of course, it's hard to speculate exactly what Gio will be like. As I said, we've only seen an outdated version of him, which is quite exciting. Still, I suspect Gio is going to come into this Rangers side, sustain the progress they've made under Gerald, and build on it. They play a similar system, but there's clearly different aspects to Gio's play, and he's had a largely different experience, so it's going to help the team become more cultured. He's clearly dying to unleash his methods, and he's recently come out and said that he wanted the Netherlands job when it was vacant, so he's eager for another job in management. So Rangers fans, get excited, because at the time of the recording this video, he looks like he's on his way, and I think you're getting a manager of tomorrow in. Thank you very much for watching, and like I said, go and check out my other videos, and if you like them, make sure you subscribe. We're closing in on 2K, and uh, it'd be great if we could reach that. Have a good day, and uh, I'll see you soon.